So my name is Li Wei Wu, and I'm studying statistics and computer science at UC Davis. And I want to thank my advisor, Chiu Xie and Jim Shamlek for their support. Without their support, I won't be here to speak in front of so many experts in the field. And also I want to thank everyone for coming. Thank you for choosing this one over the TensorFlow tutorial. I believe that one is very popular, but I guess, I mean, here is a good, better choice because, the, because I mean, you can learn TensorFlow yourself at home. Why, why spend so much money coming to this conference and uh, listen to TensorFlow tutorial, right? That's based on my experience anyway. So, and also I, think I just realized I think I'm the last one on the last day just before the closing session. So if you're hungry, and I hope my thought is worth it, so. <laughs> so uh, so the, what is the coverage ranking? Actually, it's related to the recommender system problem. So in the, in the famous Netflix problem like 10 years ago, we have users and we have items, and we also have ratings. And in that contest, the main criteria is how well we predict the missing ratings. So the one of the winning strategy is using a matrixization approach. So you approximate the rating matrix by the product of two no-dimensional matrices. And the reason we can use the product of two no-dimensional matrices is that we assume that there are only a few latent factors affecting our rating behavior. So this is the objective function used in the, in the matrixization approach. You, we have the forbidden norm of the matrix as a penalization term. And for the omega set, that's the word ratings you observed. But there are many criticisms about this approach. One of this is actually, so users have a different standard for their ratings. One user may tend to rate higher, where others may tend to rate lower. And another one is the performance in the town test is measured by the RMSE, the mean square error of ratings. But in real life, when you recommend the list to your users, actually the, 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 the top ranking, I mean top items in the list is much more important than the, in the bottom part. You want to make sure the top 10 items you recommend to users is correct or more accurate than the, than the main bottom like the 10 in thousands of items you are recommending. So this is actually our approach. Actually, we are not focusing on the ratings. Actually, we are focusing on the ranking of items rather than ratings in the model. And our performance is not measured by MSE. Rather than we are measuring the, the performance by the ranking order of top 10 items for each user. And how are we going to do this? So the problem setting is like this. So we have D1 users and D2 movies. And each user has a subset of observed movie comparisons. So if you have like ratings, for example, then based on rating, we also know the pairwise comparison of user. So the loss function we are going to show, I'm going to show is using a pairwise loss. And the, the bottom part is actually a scoring, a scoring matrix. So when we, when we predict ranking, actually we are based on the scoring matrix. So this scoring matrix doesn't have to be the rating matrix. But then, but then we output the, output the ranking, we are using this score matrix to output the final ranking. So as I, as I said, it can be applied to classical recommender system problem. And for the class of data, like reference data, we can simply transform our original rating to pairwise comparison. And using the same data, this way actually you utilize more information and so, so it's not a surprise that the previous paper have shown that using this ranking loss, actually our performance is a point-wise loss. So we have the similar sampling as the before. We also assume our scoring matrix is a low rank because for the same reason, because the, 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 the only a few, of, a few number of factors affecting the underlying scoring behavior. So here is the objective function I'm using. We have the same like regression term, but uh, for the omega, instead of the number of ratings in, in the matrix, actually we have a triplet. So why I, why I j k equal to one means user i prefers item j over item k. And here we use L2 hinge loss. As you can see, 
Now all the data is much more, right? When you when you have number of ratings, when you have when you when for leftist data, we have like a two point two point five million users, and that's already a lot of data. But when you use pairwise comparison, that will be billions of pairwise comparison. So what the previous algorithm doesn't work. So as you can see, this way we achieve better prediction and recommending results. But the shortcoming is that you will be very slow. Because in the loss function, we have many more terms. It's quadratic terms rather than, rather, than linear, um, rather than linear terms. So here is a summary of what I read. So the state of art algorithm is uh, current from ICML 2015. And also Robbie Rand from 2014 from Leaves. And the core rent has compared with algorithms uh, such as BPR. So actually in this paper, I am most, most focused on the core rank and also visualization approach. But all of this primitive algorithm requires quadratic time and quadratic memory. And the, just let me give you a few concrete numbers so you can have some idea what I'm talking about. In the full life data, we have 2.5 million users. And D2 bar is about 200. If we choose a low dimensional matrix to be 100, then the time, time per iteration, which is D1 times D2 bar squared times R, this way will be the 10 to the power 13. This is required days to train per iteration. Not to mention the memory will be like the 400 gigabyte memory it requires. So there's no way to scale up onto the full Netflix data on a single machine. So here is a summary and also some like, results I want to show you in, in the beginning before you get tired <laughs> or get hungry. So when you look at the classical maximization approach, this one is D1 is the number of users, D2 bar is the number of ratings per user. So D1 times D2 bar times R is the time complexity. And the, what the previous one is a quadratic term. And for our algorithm, our best algorithm is primal CR++, actually reduced from time from quadratic to near linear time. Actually, law D2 bar is much smaller than R, such that the, the term actually, this last term actually it's very small compared to the first term. So that's why in the result you can see the speed is quite similar. But using this ranking loss, the, the NDCG attain is much better. I, I found that using 100 ratings per user, up to 100 ratings per user, actually just achieve the same results as in using matrixization approach that use all of the ratings. And by using, by increasing the number of ratings per user I'm using, actually I achieve much better NDCG. So the red line is the one I'm using all the data in my method. So how are we going to solve this problem? It seems very hard to solve, right? So for the L2, for this objective function, as usual, because we have like the two matrix U and V, so we are using, similar as before, we are using alternating minimization approach. We will first V, face V, and update U, and then we finish U and update V. So let's look at one side, then you, you know, if you know how to do one side, you know how to do the other side. Actually, this is more complicated side. Because the V is a matrix, and when you want to take the gradient, it's become the matrix too. You may wonder why we use certain order method, right? Because in common sense, an order method will be much smaller, much slower. But if you go back to the previous slide, for this data set, the number of parameters I'm using is like the 300 million parameters. But when I do the, using a certain order to optimize, actually it only requires four or five iterations before it converges. If you use first order, first order, first order such as gradient descent, or stochastic gradient descent, this one will be much, much slower convergence rate. That's why I'm using certain order method. What's even better is that it doesn't increase the time complexity when I use certain order method. It actually is same, it's almost the same speed as using first order method. How am I going to do this? If you are computing the Gaussian matrix, of course you are, you are not going to do very well, right? Because the, after I vectorize the gradient matrix into vector, the dimension is D1 times R. D1 is the number of users. D1 is millions. And R is, if R is 100, this is hundreds of millions. So there's no way you can involve this big Haitian matrix. So how are we going to do this? Actually, we are using uh, concrete gradient descent. 
So the only part which is costly in this algorithm is that you have to compute a matrix vector product, HP. But uh, actually, the way to compute HP is similar as uh, computing a gradient. So, if, so basically the question boils down to here. Uh, how, I go, how are we going to compute gradient smartly? If we know how to compute gradient smartly, then we can, we can make this algorithm work very well. Just look at the gradient. If you are going to loop through the omega i for each user, then, there's, then, then you also have a, like the quadratic the time complexity because the omega set is huge. So you shouldn't just, look, just think this very naively. If you are thinking just looping through the omega i for each i, this will be very slow. It's, and it's not possible for like the full leftist data set. So how are we going to do this? Actually, we are actually facing, in, in here, we are actually face k and uh, do a sorting based on the product of u and v, and then do a linear scan of j. And for simplicity re reason, for illustration reason, I will simplify, use a simplified version in later slides. Actually, in practice, when you implement, it's more complicated. So here's the data like. So here is for one particular user, and when you sort item based on predictive value of u product vj, only this part requires at the end of n time, because the other parts are all linear. So data will be like this. So the, the below part is the current prediction. That's the part that you, I sorted from smallest to largest. And the observer rating is actually what you observe in the real data. Here, I only assume you observe zero or one. And when you look at the item two, actually when you, when you go back to look at the gradient formulation, you will realize that actually what, is, what really incurs the loss actually is the part of you, you on the right hand side in this window, that actually is because it's larger predictive value, but it has a small observer ratings. And only this way, only this way, so in this one, if you are, you are considering in this window, how many, how many items actually have a smaller observer rating? Similarly, in, in, when I start window to this point, you also need to count how many here, right? And here, and last. But if you are just the, doing this, like you are just the face K and then do a looping again, this is the quadratic time, right? So how are we going to solve this? If you, if you look at this ray, actually you realize this is a perfect sum. This is actually, you can actually just maintaining this perfect sum when you, do the, when, you, when you do a linear scan. So you don't have to, when you face K, you do another looping. So this is what I summarized for a simplified version. So when you, actually you first maintain a perfect sum at that K, and then when you do a linear scan, you actually, you just need to do two operations. When the ra observed rating is zero, you actually do update of the perfect sum. And then when you observe rating is one, actually you, you add, the, add the, using the perfect sum to, add, to update the gradient matrix. Here's a more complicated version. When you, when you not only have zero, one ratings, you have T levels of ratings then actually you, have, you, don't, you don't have only one perfect sum. Actually you have more than one, you have one for each level. So, so for this more complicated, more complicated cases, actually you have to do a, like a sum of the perfect sum for each level lower than you. This may sound very expensive, right? If I have a lot of t levels of, of ratings. So why doesn't t appear in my time complexity formula? This is because when I do a linear scan, when, when I do a linear scan, I, in two, uh, I need two operations each step. One is compute the, when you look at this, actually it's not a perfect sum. It's a, actually doing a perfect sum, perfect sum, like the, and then also you need to update uh, one of the perfect sum. So both operations actually can be done very efficiently. So you can, do, you can this can be done like in, a lot of t time, which and t is straightly smaller or less than the uh, d two bar, so you don't we don't have a t in the time complexity formula. 
and we're using the Simon tree or family tree for this one. So the, to summarize, so overall, overall time complexity, we, we are reducing from the before quadratic to near linear time. And when you plot in the number, actually this is order of three speed up. And this made us, is, made us ask to com be comparable to standard matrixization approach. As I mentioned, the second term is much smaller than the first term. So actually when it's, it's very practical in real life. And this is our method. And when, I, when we do the experiment, as I mentioned earlier, I'm using NDCR10, and I'm average over users. So NDCG, if you don't know, is, is very commonly used in ranking, as like you need to rank, for example. And so, because it's discounted, so the, the, the top items are more important than items in the bottom. And I'm going to show the comparisons for, for three different uh, settings. The first one is I'm going to do a subsample data as what people usually do in the literature. In the literature, people usually subsample some data, face the number of items for each user, and then use the rest as, train, as a test data set. And I, I, show, I, I show my algorithm is much, fast, uh, much faster and much better than state of the art. So core rank is, uh, is here. And our method is here. And if you are familiar with the red literature, a long time ago, there's a coffee rank, which is here. And even for left data, we have similar results. Our primal cell plus plus is the, is the blue line. And uh, even our slower version, red line, is still much faster than core rank. And also, for the matrixization approach, I mean, it's, it's relatively fast, but uh, the problem is that it's not very it's really very good in terms of NDCG. I mean, it's good, but it's not great. That's what we care about, right? And uh, when we do a parallelization, actually, I, by the then, I implemented in Julia. And what I found out when I impl really implemented in C++ is that actually the speed up is even, even greater in, in Julia. So what the plots I showed here is I'm comparing my Julia code with the other C++ code, which is not really a fair comparison, but we still won't buy a lot. And it got the paper safety, so. And the, using C++, the plot will be the gap between our algorithm, uh, with their algorithm will even be bigger, and also the speed up, when you scale from one core to eight cores, the, the scaling up will also be better. But even now, it's pretty good. So, when I was reading the papers in previous literature, I always have this question. Why you do subsampling when you actually can use for the data set? Is there any reason for doing this? Uh, actually, that's the that's the motivation of our algorithm because the previous algorithm doesn't really scale up to the full to the full data, so they just do subsampling and then they show they are doing better than previous method. So actually, our algorithm is the first ranking based algorithm that can scale up to the full life data set using a single machine and without subsampling. So the last question is, does using more training data set help us to predict and recommend better? The answer is yes. So in the, in the experiment setting, basically I'm, I'm fit, I face the test data set, and then I set a threshold of the number of training data set I'm going to use for each user, and I incrementally increase in the threshold. And what I found is that even for the smaller data set, like the movie length one million ratings, you, you see uh, that in the previous algorithm, when you use more data set, it's very slow. So you don't see the performance gain a lot. Actually, you, because you it's slow, so people don't, maybe you don't use this, and uh, you wait, wait a long time before it actually converge. So, but for, uh, for, the, for, the, for the movie length, but we still found that using 200 is much better than using 100. But the difference between all the data set and 200 is small. But for large data set, such as light phase data set, difference is huge. When you use 100 ratings, the line is here. That's like the, the, that's the equivalent, say, using what data set in matrix validation approach. But when you increase to the threshold to 200, this, this is the performance from here to here. So the blue, blue line is I'm using 200 ratings per user. And the red line is what I'm using for the full data set for the same test data set. 
For the same test data set, using more training data actually boosts the performance a lot. So that's my, so, so that's my, uh, my the take home point is that when you, when you have more data point, actually I think it's better to use water, water data point rather than do a subsampling. Because this way actually you improve the performance. So my conclusion is that is all algorithm actually can be used to replace the metropolization approach in recommended system. Because what the previous algorithm cannot scale up, but our algorithm can scale up very well and can be solved very efficiently almost the same time as the metropolization approach. And even in real life, when you have more data that you cannot store on one machine, our algorithm can also be implemented in distributed system session, as a mean setting. And we show that using more data actually helps the performance. And I, I put our Julia code on, and also C++ on code on, C, on GitHub. So if you are interested, you can take a look at our code. And uh, I think that's all. Thank you for your coming. <laughs>